Hi everyone, welcome to this other bit. So we are still on the budgeting process. We are looking at, a, we've looked at a functional budget. We we'll look at how we could flex budgets and use it to identify the variances. And of course, identifying the variances are easy, but the main thing we normally need in variance analysis is to be able to give explanations and reasons why the figures are moving from X to Y and whether they are dropping or um, or increasing and then the reason why. Today we are looking at cash budgeting, okay? So the concept is nothing difficult, okay? It's, it's quite easy, very, very easy. I think so far is the most easiest of all the concepts. The only thing we need to look at is trying to adjust credit terms and credit time limits, okay? So we'll look at it, we'll look at it. The rest are pretty easy. And we all prepare some form of cash budget every now and then. Sometimes intuitively, we just look at our bank account statements and then we try to project what amount we, we expect to receive and then how we plan to spend these funds, okay? So we are gonna look at um, cash budgets and then we see how we can construct an effective cash budget, all right? So cash, many times we, we've heard what it means. They say cash is king, right? I'm sure you've heard it, cash is king. Cash is, is the lifeblood of any business organization. That's typically what we're going to be looking at today. All right, so let's, let's take a deep dive into the cash budget. Okay, so we're looking at the importance of cash, um, working capital, and then the extended um, cash cycles or the cash cycle and then extended cash cycle. Then we'll look at the cash budget in detail, all right? So like I said, cash is the lifeblood of the organization. Without cash, you don't survive. It's like every human being, okay? We need the blood in our systems to function. And, and cash is what every organization needs to function. So profit is not the same as cash. You can be running at a loss and still have cash, okay? I tried to do an analysis of a five-year statement of Tesco, you know Tesco? always receives cash every now and then, at least from their supermarkets, okay? And and for the five years to, to 2018, 2018, 2019, they were making losses. But can you imagine that Tesco will run out of cash and cannot pay their workers, cannot pay their leases? That will lead to the collapse of the organization, okay? But you can imagine, they were making losses, but Tesco still had cash, okay? So profit is not the same as cash. Loss is not the same as um, having no cash. It's not the same. Remember, profit is a concept and subject to accounting rules and principles, and it's calculation and presentation. So if you and I are in the same organization, you run a, a, an organization same as mine, and I'm using a different accounting policy. For example, if I'm using a reducing balance method of depreciation, what will happen is that I'll be recording lower expenses in terms of depreciation. Lower expenses means I'll end up getting higher profits, okay? If you are using the straight line method, you will most likely be recording higher depreciation amounts, okay? But higher depreciation amounts means higher expenses, which leads to lower profits. So profit depends on the concept and the accounting estimate or accounting principle that the organization um, adopts, okay? IFRS sometimes. It's, it's not stringent, it's flexible. So we all use choose what fits best to the organization. So ultimately we need cash and to determine the success of the organization because it helps us to pay or meet our obligations, our debt obligations to pay for any assets we purchase, to pay for short, short and long-term debts, to pay any real cash returns to the owners like dividends, okay? Or drawings um, to also check um, and also there'll be bankruptcy if a company becomes, is unable to meet its debts, okay? So to be sure whether we don't run into bankruptcy. So cash is, is always key for, this, for the survival of any business organization, okay? The working capital cash cycle is, is simple. Let's assume we're a manufacturing organization. Here, you realize that we go to the, to the market and buy raw materials from the suppliers, okay? Now, we buy the raw materials from the suppliers and then we convert it into both work in cap, work, work in progress, WIP, and then to finish goods, we, we convert them. Now, once we have finished converting the goods into a finished goods, 
it takes us some number of days to sell it to, to debtors. Okay, so debtors are customers, we sell it to them. And then we also take some number of days to pay us cash, all right? So here, when we buy the materials from the, from the creditors, from our creditors, it takes us some number of days to pay them. Okay, number of days to pay them, all right? When we have converted it into finished goods and we sell it to these customers, usually let's say on credit, they also take some number of days, okay, to pay us. Also, let's say number of days to receive cash from them, okay, to receive cash from them, okay. So that is typically what we are talking about. So again, the question is, how long does it take us, okay? How long, so the number of days, to sell, to sell our goods. So it takes us some number of days to pay our creditors if we buy on credit. It takes us some number of days to be able to convert these fixed, uh, these finished goods or this stock into, into uh, cash by selling. And it takes these debtors some number of days to, to, to pay us money, to receive cash from them, okay? So there's a cycle. So the cash, cycle or the working capital car cycle simply talks of the number of days that test take to give us cash plus the number of days we take to sell our stock to raise cash minus the number of days we take to pay our creditors okay so it's talking of the two receipts okay number of days to sell number of days to sell we sell to do what? To receive cash. Plus number of days to receive cash from debtors. So that's also an inflow, okay? Minus the number of days we use to pay, okay? So the inflows minus the outflows. That's simply cash, working, um, working capital cash cycle. This could be extended, okay? This working capital cycle, cash cycle could be extended to include other sources of cash inputs and other sources of cash out, outputs or outflows, okay? So again, we could extend it by looking at receiving some share capital or some additional funds from the providers of the of cash, okay? And then also we could sell for cash instantly and get cash. You can't go to <clears throat> the one of these shops, Tesco and say, I wanna buy or pay later, no. You pay in cash. Also could be other income like bank interest received or any dividend received, okay? And then also additional cash outlets or channels that cash, cash we could we could channel cash out of the organization. So talk of dividend payments, finance payments, interest payment, any cash purchases we, we buy from creditors and we pay exactly instantly. Okay, any overheads paid like wages, utilities, um, um, yes. And then talk of any assets we purchase in any business taxation. These are the extended cash. Um, this extended cash cycle system. All right. Now let, let's move on to this question. I will run through this quickly and you, you should be able to understand. Which of the following statements are true regarding cash flow? A business should aim to decrease. So the keyword is to decrease the creditor or supplier period. Now, if we take 30 days to pay a supplier and we reduce it to 15 days, are we conserving cash? No. So if you decrease the number of creditor days, you are, you, are, you are starving yourself of cash. It is not the ideal procedure, it's not, okay? Try to negotiate more days to pay the, the suppliers, okay, the creditors. A business should aim to decrease the debtor or customer credit period. So if it takes us 30 days to receive cash from our debtors, people, customers, should we decrease it to 15 days? If, now, if customers now take 15 days instead of 30 days to pay us cash, is it a good thing? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. That's, a, that's the right thing to follow, okay? A business should aim to decrease the stock days. If we take 30 days to sell our stock from the shops, and now we can reduce it to 15 days. So instead of the stocks being on the shelves for 30 days, it takes 15 days to sell, to get cash. Is it a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. So we should aim to decrease the stock days, okay? A, a, a business should aim to increase credit period. No, don't, don't, don't opt to increase the credit period. I'll leave the rest. I'll not even go for that one. So don't. The, the, the D is not a right option to do, okay? Which of the following statements are false regarding cash flow? An increase in profit will produce an equal increase in cash. No, profit is, profits are not the same as cash, okay? Unless the company is running a typical cash system, cash accounting system. 
In that case, we can say profit equals to cash. They have no accruals. There is nothing like pre, uh, prepayment and accruals. No. In that case, we can say yes. But we are dealing with a typical organization where accrual is 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 done. Okay, it's used. A business will, will go bust when it fails to generate profits. No, like I said, Tesco was running at a loss for a long time until they bought the main supplier, the wholesale line, which was uh, which caused them to now do a quick turnaround to make profits. Okay, so. The fact that you're making you're making losses or you fail to make profit will not cause your business to run down. Okay, it it is just a subjective accounting uh, measurement. Okay, a business will go bust when it runs out of cash. Typically, yes. If you don't have cash to pay your so, your your workers today, what happens? What happens? They all run out. And then you you know how the consequences to the organization. Profit is measured subjectively. Like I said, you could use a different accounting approach or method, and I could use a different one. Cash is objective. If, if it's 50,000, it's 50,000. That's cash. Okay, it doesn't matter whether the pounds is, is the Bank of England pounds or Bank of Scotland pounds. It's the same. All right. So, yes, easy to, to get these answers. Now, let's go to the cash budget. So, it looks as simply forecasting the cash inflows and the cash outflows of the organization. And these are real cash movements. We are not talking of invoiced amounts, okay? We are talking of real cash. So like I said, there's a saying which says cash is king. So every business aspect, regardless of the size, must go to, must worship the king, okay? So everyone must prepare a cash budget. Why? It, when there are cash shortages, it helps us to identify areas where we can cut down on cost and areas where we can boost uh, more more inflows, okay, and helps the organization to put in some contingency plans to to resolve any instance of um, bankruptcy, okay. Now these cash budgets usually have three of th usually three three components, okay. So let's say four, let's say four usually. So it has the opening balance, okay, the opening balance which will be shown, or the inflows, the outflows, and then the closing balance. Usually four. So segmented into four sections. Let's take a typical example. We can prepare these cash budgets on weekly basis, on monthly basis, or quarterly basis. Usually I've found most being prepared on quarterly basis, but you can prepare it on daily, on weekly, on fortnightly, okay? That's the option by the organization to choose, all right? So um, sources, where can we get cash from? So sales, okay? Both cash sales and credit sales. So um, we sell to customers. <coughs> They decide to pay us 20% today and pay us 80% next month. They are all sources of cash. Okay, the, the, the owner of the, co of the company could also inject some long-term capital, which is cash. Okay, we can go for loans from the banks. We can receive interest from the banks, dividends, we can sell our assets, which we are not using, and we can generate um, cash. Okay, so what about sources of cash out? Areas where we, we, we lose cash or we channel out cash. So we can pay payment to suppliers. What are cash or credit? So sometimes we, we buy today, we pay tomorrow. So these are still payments. At the end of the day, you still pay, okay? There could be also interest payments to lenders. You go and go for a mortgage, um, an overdraft, you'll be paying interest, okay? High purchase, okay? Um, payment to owners. Owners could come for some drawings. They can come for selling of some of their shares. So we can also have to pay them something, okay? What about purchasing of assets? We could buy assets on credit, on cash. At the end of the day, we we'll ultimately pay cash. We can pay tax or tax liabilities to the HMRC, and then also payment of other overheads like wages, salaries, uh, electricity, rent and rate. Okay, so on bonuses, so on and so forth. Let's try to take an example. Builder, Barry the builder. This guy builds extensions and, and conservatories. Okay. So we've had this information about him. We want to prepare a cash budget. So um, for a quarter, so we are looking at three months, okay, for a quarter. Now, at the beginning of the period, January, Barry had 36000 in in his cash account or in his bank account, okay? Now, all goods are purchased using just-in-time method, and they are paid one month later. So this guy will purchase materials from suppliers and he'll pay one month later, okay? Now we have been told that as of December last year, Barry had purchased some materials costing 25,000. So he buys today and he will buy one month later. So these December purchases will be paid when? January, okay? 
Now, um, the jobs he's had in January, February, March, let's assume um, the, the jobs are the same as the units, okay? So these are the materials per job, labor cost per job, okay? So to find the total labor cost is 8,000 times six, okay? Um, another 8,000 times eight and 9,000 times 10, okay? Keep this in mind whilst we scroll on so that you'll be able to understand the numbers, okay? Material cost, and these are the purchases we are talking about up here that he buys today and he'll pay one month later. So you realize that for January, it will give us six times five, okay? Which will give us what? 30,000. Take note of that. Six, eight, it gives us some 48,000. And then this one will give us some 60,000. Labor is the same, eight times six, okay? So our labor should give us again 48,000, right? And then we find it 500, let me be sure before I plug in the wrong answer, it 500 by eight should give us our 68, right? I thought it was 8,000, okay. So it gives us some 68,000 to be precise. And then this gives us some 90,000, okay? So we'll not be revisiting this slide in the subsequent, but just take note of the figures, okay? All right, so these are two purchases that we can think of, okay? Remember the units were six, eight, and 10. We need it for identifying the sales as well. All right, so we are being told labor costs are paid in the month in which it occurs. So you hire people today, you pay them their wages in the same month of production, okay? You can hire me today and pay me next month. It happens, usually cash flow staff will be paid one month in arrear. So that's what we are saying. Production overheads are focused. So all the labor costs we got, the, the 48,000, the 68,000, and then the 90 will be within the month. So January will be there's February, okay. Production overheads are forecast to be 8,000 per month. That's that's straightforward, okay? For every month, production overhead is 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, okay? Non-production wages and salaries are 4,000 for January and February. These are expected to rise by 10,000, 10% in March. So in forecast the increase, okay? Non-production wages is this amount, it will, it will increase 10%, okay? Um, when we go into the figures, yeah, okay. Keep it that way, all right. So the bank interest is 400, expected to be received in March. So we receive bank interest 400, okay? And then it will be received in March, okay? Electricity of 2000 will be paid in, in January, okay? Telephone cost of 620 will be paid in February and business rates 1,200 will be paid each month, okay? So took note, they've given me the months, okay? Admin overheads are 1,500 and they are forecast for each month, okay? They are forecast for each month. So on the sales aspect, we have been told that these are the details. Average selling price per contract or job is 18,000. So for the month of January, it's 18 times six jobs. For the month of February, it is 18 times the eight that we had, I'm sure it was eight. And then for the month of March, it will be 18 times the 10 jobs, okay? That will give us the sales, all right? Now, we have been told that 80 on credit, 20 on cash. So within the first month of that we purchase, it's, it's 20%, okay? It's 20%. But within the subsequent period, um, we pay the 80%, okay? Debtors tend to pay their debts in the following month, like I said. So we pay the 80% in the subsequent month. And then the money owed by debtors from... December sales is 90,000, okay? So that's what we've, we've been told that from December people owed us 90, which it means this represents the 80% which was owed, okay? Now sales executives will receive a commission of 5% of total sales for the first quarter. So simply find a commission 5% on the total sales, okay? Regardless of whether it is cash or credit. And this will be paid in March. So commission is paid quarterly in March, okay? Company plans to purchase new equipment using a high purchase agreement deal. Uh, there'll be a deposit of 10,000 in February, okay? And 5,000 monthly thereafter, okay? Now, let's see. Now we need to gather the necessary information, work out the timing of the cash flows, that's more important. Of particular concern, we need to look at the customer and creditor days and see when we pay the supplier the extra amount. And we say we pay them one month in arrears. And then we receive payments from debtors 
um, 80 percent one month later right uh, business will normally want to so this is what i explained in the question okay in the multiple choice question okay so we always want to lengthen our credit facility but want to shorten our credit period granted to customers okay so we need to do some workings and i've we've started already doing the workings um, for some other items we just plug them in we just insert them all right so let's take a good look so remember in in the month of december we incurred twenty five thousand from the information it means we'll pay the next month right january thirty thousand remember the calculation we did okay that, that's five thousand times the six and then the 48,000, which was the 8,000 times uh, times the six, okay? Um, and then and then the match, we did those calculations there in terms of payments, okay? So each one will be paid one month in arrears, okay? So we pay it one month in arrears, so which means this is what the fig, these are the figures, these are the figures we get, all right? So they will plug, we'll, we'll pay them one month later. Now, what about the sales? What about the sales? Remember this? 90,000 was carried forward from December. It represents the 80%, okay? But in the first month, we remember the sales was 18,000 units times the, the job, amount of job units that we, we, we have to, to provide, okay? What was the job units if we could go quickly back into the slide, into the slide, um, the units was six, right? So if six times 18,000, okay, should give us 108,000, 108,000, that's it. That's 108,000. And the second was 18,000 times the, the, the units, I think eight or so, all right? I think 18,000 times eight, okay? Times eight should give us, yes, one, four, four. So this one was, yes. And the other one was 10, so 18,000 times 10. This is the total sales, but they said we'll pay 20% cash instantly. But the rest represent the 80% will go to the next period. Okay, so this December figure will be paid here. And this 80% of the January period will be paid here. And this 115%, which represents 80% of 144, will be paid this next month. And then the same applies, this 144,000 representing 80% of 180 will be paid in, in um, April, okay? So that's what we are trying to work out over there. So that's what we get. So our real cash we paid for the period, payment is this for January, February was this, and March was this. We are preparing for a quarter. But for this particular month, the sales that we received was a cash, 20% cash, plus the 80% carry forward from December. That's what we are getting here, okay? That's what we are getting here. The same way for February, it is the it is the 20% cash plus the 86,400 from January, okay? So that's what we get here, okay? And the same way for March, it is this cash 20% and then 115,200, 80% from the previous month which gives us these elements, okay? Let's see what will be the total, okay? What will be the total? So in effect, payment we actually made in January was this, for materials. Labor will come later, labor is in the same amount. These are the calculations we need to do. And then for sales, this is the physical cash we received. The same applies for February, and then this is the physical cash. So we are dealing with the, the cash items, okay? Now let's jump into our figures. Okay, let's jump into our figures. So take a look at this, okay? Take a look at this. So for January, we are looking at, um, we are looking at opening balance. So the opening balance was 36, that's what we said, okay? Now the sales receipt is 111,600. We just got it from the previous slide, okay? Was there any bank interest? No, but we'll see bank interest somewhere, okay? Total sales income or cash, actual cash is 111,600. For the expenditure, there was a purchase. We picked it from the previous slide, remember? Labor cost was in the month that it incurred. We incurred it in the month of production. So that's the 48. Production overhead is this. Wages and admin cost. So we are, we are lumping the wages and admin cost together. Okay, if you pick the figures, realize it is 5,500. 
and directly we can easily easily get it from the information. Telephone and, and internet is given directly. Business rate starts like the tax is from the information directly. Okay, was there any sales commission? Yes, but it was paid at the at the end of the quarter. So take note of that. High purchase, yes, but it started in the next month, February, not this year. So total expenditure was this eight nine seven hundred. Knock it off from the hundred and eleven six hundred, and we get to we get twenty one nine hundred. Add a twenty one nine hundred to the to the opening balance of twenty of thirty six. Okay, and you get fifty seven. The closing balance here becomes the opening balance for February. Okay, so do the same. Do the same for fe for February, okay? Do the same for February, okay? And I realize that the high purchase figure is now popped in. We remember this, we said we'll be paying a deposit in the first month and the next month will be 5,000 onwards, okay? So the same scenario, labor was paid in the month in which it was incurred and the rest are fixed. You see them, all right? Now, let's move on again. Let's look at the March, okay? Let's look at the March. Remember, this has increased by 5,900 because we said wages were increased by an extra 10% of the 4,000. So compute, you see extra 400 added to the 500 total admin and wages gives you 5,900. That's why it has changed slightly over here. The rest remain the same. We calculated the labor cost from the previous slides, okay? And this was from the purchase and calculation and then this is the sales, okay? So again, the closing balance here, 49,772 becomes the opening balance here. Okay, and then at the end of the day, the quarter, our figure is this. Look at the trend, look at the trend. You realize that we had 57,900, it's reduced to 47,700, and now it has reduced to 21,000. So it is dropping. This tells you, gives you a red flag that, hey, something is happening, be careful. What is happening? Then you can take a decision as, as an organization to ensure you revert any hazard, okay? You can do a cross check, a cross check. So for the whole quarter, for the whole quarter, we had an opening balance of 36,000. For the whole quarter, we had actual cash receipts of 378,400. For the whole quarter, the actual payments we made was 392,400. When we knock off the 392 from the 378, we make a deficit, okay? A deficit, not a loss, a deficit of 14, um, three, trade or a shortage of cash, okay? But fortunately, we had some, some positive cash balance, so we knocked the difference off, and it means we have reduced to 21,672. So we started with 36,000, but now we have 21,672. This is not, this not profit, okay? This is talking about the real cash balance. So it gives the, the builder or bury the builder hint on what to do to resolve some of these issues, okay? Cash budget example, so... Like I said, the negative cash balance gives you a hint that something is not, is not right. Be careful. We look at areas where we can seal off expenses outgoing so that we can increase more inflows to be sure that we don't run into bankruptcy, okay? What are the other areas we can explore? We can use the extended working capital cash cycle, okay, the extended cash cycle. So for example, we could raise some short-term loans or longer-term sources of, of funds from the owner to plug in so that we can close these gaps which have arisen, okay? So like I said, owner can bring in some capital, we can go for bank loans, okay? Now, you don't, know, you don't, you don't want to, as a company or as a business, you don't want to continue running indefinitely with negative balances. You end up um, running down or closing off your, your organization, okay? Uh, one more example quickly and then we can round it off. So. Calculate the present and, and uh, calculate and present the schedule of receipts and payments for the following supplier and customer data. Okay, so guitars um, and pianos. These are the purchases. We said credit facility, one month facility. It means we purchase it today, but we pay it the next month, one month. But for piano, it's two months. So this ten four hundred will not be paid this month. It will be paid in a subsequent month, two months. Okay, that's that's the only thing we find over here. So this will not be paid here. It will be paid in the other month, okay? But this will be paid in next month, okay? Okay, that's it. Now, for the, for the sales, we said all guitars are on cash. None is on credit, all on cash. So they occur in the month in which the sales occur. Pianos, however, is one month in arrears, okay? One month. So we sell to these guys. They'll pay us 40% 
cash instantly within the same month by 60% credit on the next month. So the 60% will come here. So 60% of this will come here and then 60% instantly. All right, let's see how we can compute this. So very easy, very easy. So like I said, this is the data we've been given. 5,000 will be paid the next month. 4,000 the next month, okay? So 5,000 the next month, 4,000 the next month, 3,500 the next month, easy. But what about a 10, 400? It will not be paid the next month. It will be paid the next two months. What about the 6, 800? It will not be paid here. It will be paid the next month, okay? That's why you find it here, okay? Same applies to the um, 8, 400. It will not be paid this month. It will be paid the next month. All right. Easy. Two months credit facility. What about the guitars? Everything is, in, is on cash, right? Everything is on cash, so it occurs in the month in which we 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 sold it. What about the the pianos? Pianos, we said forty percent cash, so find a forty percent of the total amount of twenty eight hundred, and then sixty percent on credit. But the sixty percent will be paid the next month, one month credit facility. Okay, the same applies. Sixty percent of this uh, thirteen six hundred will be that. Okay, so at the end of the day, we need our total cash flows. Okay, so the outflow was here, 5,000. Sorry for my messy um, um, annotations. Okay, but I believe you can understand it. And then what about um, June? It is a 4,000 times a 10,400. Okay, that's for June. But for July would be the the two we have over there, right? So the July would then be for the, for the two we have over there. So on and so forth. What about the sales in terms of... Um, the the situation we have on hand it is a ten thousand plus the three it's three twenty that, that that's it for now okay that's it for now so that's what we're gonna get so it is the eighteen three twenty but for for me it is the eight thousand plus a five four forty okay plus this sixty percent carry forward twelve thousand for eighty so we get twenty five nine twenty the same applies to the seven thousand plus the six seven twenty plus the um, 60% carry forward from the previous month, which is 8,160, get uh, 21,880. So simply this is all about cash budget, okay? And we've at least been able to understand how important cash is, and cash is important to control the business. We need to identify the sources of cash and um, where we can channel out cash or where cash is channeled out. We can easily explain what a working capital working capital cash cycle is. You'll meet it sometime later in your academic life. Uh, those of you pursuing accounting, you look at working capital ratios, okay? And you come across the cash operating cycle. So it's the same scenario you find over there, the cash operating cycle. You find the, the data days, okay? We find the data days. We find the, 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 the stock conversion days, and we find the creditor days and we add the inflows minus the outflows, okay? So again, we've given you some, so try to be able to construct this and interpret it to any management organization or any senior official. So again, giving you some 10 key concepts, which you can try to read around and try to understand the key items over there, all right? So quite easy and quite important for every organization to construct the cash budget. Cash is keen. And every organization must bow to the king, right? Um, the king reigns. And also, yes, cash is, is the lifeblood of every organization. And we need this lifeblood to survive. Otherwise, be sure, we will not be financially sustainable. Neither can we continue as a going concern into the future foreseeable period. All right. Thank you. See you soon.